IC for high speed train end up on an abandoned piece of track in the middle of Libya? Stick around and find out how the Italian government, the Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi and the Danish railways share a connection in this interesting slice of modern railway history. Okay. In the year 2000, Please the Danish State Railways or DSB ordered over 100 new high speed train sets from the Italian manufacturer Ansaldo Breda for over 5.3 billion Danish crowns, which, adjusting for inflation, amount That's to about a lot. 1 billion euro today. This order included 83 brand new IC4 high speed train sets intended to replace the old IC3s servicing so the like inner bullet city trains or something. Jeez. That's crazy. Why is it not working? These IC4 okay. trains turned out to be a disaster for the Danish railways, and their failure and many, many shortcomings are documented in length here on YouTube already. What I want to focus on today is another story surrounding the scandal of the chaotic procurement of this Danish train set. The story of how one of these IC4 trains ordered by the Danish railways ended up right here in Libya's capital city of Tripoli. In 2009, the delivery of the IC4 train sets intended for Denmark was already delayed by over three years, having been initially scheduled for January of 2006. Because of this, the Danish railways were facing mounting criticism regarding the slow, and arduous modernization of their domestic train fleet. Naturally, the pressure from the DSB on the Italian manufacturer <laughs> Ansaldo Breda was mounting as the DSB was growing increasingly impatient and embarrassed of the damage done to their image. At this same time, Silvio Berlusconi was serving his second year as elected Prime Minister of Italy. This might initially seem somewhat unrelated, but as it turns out, Berlusconi the lovable, honest man of the people and savvy businessman of the highest reputation is the link uh, why is he hugging a lamb? Ansaldo That's Breda just weird. And the Danish railways. You see, while Ansaldo Breda was trailing far behind the agreed upon delivery time frame, Libya's then totally democratic ruler, Muammar Gaddafi, was celebrating the 40th year since his rise to power in the country. Of course. Berlusconi and Gaddafi seem to have mutual admiration for each other, as they had a history of exchanging nice words and friendly gestures. This actually ended up earning Berlusconi criticism from within Europe regarding his friendly attitude towards the Libyan dictator. In fact, Berlusconi must have really been quite fond of Gaddafi because it was him, of all people, who gave the train ordered and paid for by the Danish railways to Gaddafi as a present to commemorate his 40 year reign. Okay. <laughs> when Berlusconi made him this present, Gaddafi's government was actually preparing the start of major railway construction projects all over the country, striking a deal with, among others, the China Railway Construction Corporation, or CRCC, the Russian Railways, or RGD, and notably also Ansaldo mm. SDS. A subsidiary of Finn Mechanica, the same corporation who Noise. owned Ansaldo Breda. Ah, noise, man. Unfortunately for Libya, the proposed railway projects were understandably halted during the 2011 revolution and they have since laid abandoned with only a tiny bit of track built in Tripoli and the proposed connections remaining unfinished. To this day, Libya has not had an operational railway service since 1965. That's crazy. Turning back to Italy, Finn Mechanica, which is nowadays called Leonardo, is an aerospace and defense conglomerate with a wide network of subsidiaries and investments across a variety of technical industries. They are also, both he still hasn't told us how it ended up in there, closely tied to the Italian government, whose Ministry for the Economy and Finance held and still holds roughly 30% of the company's shares. Because of this, it's not too difficult to imagine how Berlusconi, being the stand-up guy that he is, had the necessary connections and authority no, I don't think it's a bullet train. to simply borrow one of the train sets intended for the DSB and have it shipped to his autocratic buddy in Libya instead. 
With the media buzz surrounding the IC4 debacle in Denmark, it didn't take too long for Danish media to catch wind of this IC4 with its suspiciously unique design just standing around on a short piece of track in the Libyan capital city of Tripoli. In 2011, the Danish technology website ING reported on the train being spotted in an article by the International Railway Journal. As far as I can tell, it was this image released by the Libyan railways themselves which caught their attention in the first place. Unfortunately, the original journal article along with the source for many of the images shown is not accessible to me anymore. However, being confronted with this article, the head of the IC4 project at DSB, Torben Kronstam, claimed that the depicted IC4 train sporting a smart 40-year celebration livery was likely it's merely an exhibition <laughs> and not taken from their pool of ordered vehicles. This turned out to be false, demonstrated by the signs and markings on the train, which were still in Danish. And later, the DSB also agreed that this was indeed one of the train sets ordered by them. In 2013, a TV crew sent by a Danish late-night satire show paid a visit to the train, again flaring up the conversation around it and getting some interesting footage, as well as finding out that the Libyans left in charge of the train at the time of their visit were actually not in possession of the keys to the train and thus entirely unable to enter or drive it. Do you know if Terrible. You inside? Yes, the point is the key is it's not uh, with this one, one uh, person and one person uh, is not, it's not available now. It remained unclear whether or not anyone even still had the key to it. I've also found footage from CGTN and Arab24 showing views from inside and outside the train, which you'll already have seen playing in the background. It seems that every once in a while, when the Libyan government decides to make another push to construct railway infrastructure, this train again becomes a popular subject for African journalists. The train while even has holes in it and everything. Be virtually unchanged from the interior as specified in order by the DSB, others look very, very <clears throat> different. Berlusconi seems to have made sure that some parts of the train were renovated to be luxury compartments with much nicer interior and furnishing, including what appear to be leather couches and even a conference room with a big table like all in all, dictators free train. meetings at. This extremely Make it a five -star train. swagged out interior is a fitting present from one flamboyant country leader to another, but came as a real surprise to anyone following the IC4 project at the time. The train ended up being part of the Libyan Railways exhibition and conference in 2011, where it was used to demonstrate to visitors how luxuriously they might travel on the future high-speed lines through the country. The track that the train stands on to this day is an about 5 km long stretch on which the Libyan authorities Actually, were more like three kilometers. trials and demonstrations huh. of the train. This piece of track seems to have been the starting point for construction on the coastal line through Tripoli, though besides some landscaping work and this initial stretch of track, not much of it was ever completed. In addition to this, the small amount of track which was built there was allegedly partially dismantled by looters, selling the steel for scrap, as these pictures claim to show. Hey, my town did that. <laughs> Ultimately, the story of the Stole Libya the C4 is an amusing one serving as a great anecdote about modern railway history and a bizarre story that only life itself could write. At the same time, however, it is a symbol for the continued suffering of the Libyan people and thus also an unfortunate story of power-hungry despots, corruption and war. Thanks a lot for <laughs> making it to the end of this okay. video. I've been I just wanted to know how the train got there. I didn't need a whole backstory. It was interesting how a train got there though, to be honest. Like I said, a free train.